Hi, I'm uh, Zeno Grayton. I directed The Lost Boys, um, who will be showing in uh, Generation 14 Plus. Hello and welcome to the 37th Teddy Award. My name is Jan Felix Wuttig, and today I'm here with director Zeno Graton to talk about his film The Lost Boys. Hello, Zeno. Very great to have Hi. you here. Happy to be here. Um, thank you so much for for the Lost Boys or Le Paradis, as as the uh, the original name is. Um, I found it was an incredibly beautiful film that was very very well told, um, and it it tells the story of these two inmates in a youth detention center who fall in love with each other. Um, Maybe you could tell us a little bit about how that idea came to you. Um, well, first, there was the idea to work um, and talk about those places that are, for me, very invisible. Um, I have a, a family story that is like my cousin was was uh, was there was uh, was a, an inmate. When I was a teenager, and uh, he would uh, be caught for something very, very little, and directly sent there. And um, you know, at the time, I was really thinking like it could could have been me, um, could have been me. Yeah. So um, I, I I I saw at the moment at this moment uh, how my family reacted to this, how society is very reacting very harshly on those people. How, how they are very like invisibilized, and I wanted to to talk about that um, from from their point of view. And um, the second thing that that you know helped me shape the the first ideas for the film was my link to Jean Genet, mm -hmm. who uh, who's like uh, an author that really helped me a lot, and I think shaped for me the idea of desire, and and it was the first. Uh, first author that I met that that I was feeling a connection with how they were portraying love between two boys, mm -hmm. you know, two, two men, uh, which was something I didn't see before yeah. anywhere else. Yeah. And it was in a way that it was so free, so uh, without any shame, without any without any look at at, at ourself that that is that is you know like shameful or you know. My English is not very good, but you know, you know, you get the idea. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wanted to, you know, make a flamboyant story, uh, and yet talk about in a political way those places. Talk about those places in a way to critique to, and so I. So that's that's how it was born. Yeah, and I th I feel you really succeed in that. You are able to show a tenderness between those two in a very harsh environment and at the same time not have it be unpolitical, you know? But I, I was actually going to ask about uh, Jean Genet because yeah. there's, there's different, you know, first of all, the setting is kind of similar and then you have several shots that are very similar to Un Chant d'Amour, um, I think. Um, and, uh, well, I, I was just going to ask about whether you had that film in mind when, when you made uh, Le Paradis? Of course. Um, I think this is my favorite movie of all time, I think. And for me, it's, it's, um, it was an homage. And of course, it was in mind. I had that in mind. And it was an homage to Genet. I didn't want it to be like upfront, but I wanted to place here and there some some homage. For me, Genet is a very revolutionary uh, artist um, because he was, I wanted to channel him through the, the writing and also through the shooting because he's someone who stood up for uh, a lot of oppressed people across the world and across times. Like he, he, he stood up for, with, alongside the Black Panthers, he stood up for the Palestinian people in the 70s. Even in Germany, he's, he was with, uh, you know, the Ulrike Mein uh, Meinhof band and, you know, wrote a very beautiful text for them at the moment. And for me, he was really this, this person who was without a home and who was just, you know, traveling through 
the world and through time and sometimes in prison, sometimes in not. And um, so Jean Genet, he's really my uh, spiritual father in a way. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's why I wanted to not only channel him through the love story, through the walls, but also through the political aspect of the storytelling and, you know, to really create a critique of those places in a non uh, binary binary way, like it's not either they're not good or bad. Is mm -hmm. because I, I was there a lot. I, I I got the authorization to spend one month, like two times, one month, mm -hmm. uh, in one year apart, in order to write the story. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, the, I could develop the critique um, that that you see in the film. Yeah. yeah. Um, was it something, uh, maybe, do you, do you have one thing that really surprised you a lot about these places? Because many people don't really ever get to see them from the inside. And I would guess that they are maybe much different than, than the cliche is that, that many of us have in our heads. I would say two things. Like, the first thing is... Um, the dedication of the educators. So they're really commit 100% for them and it's the system who actually puts obstacles in their way in order to put these kids back into society. Um, they, they make a hard work, they, 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 you know, they provide very hard work. Um, so that's why I was super surprisingly happy to see when I was there. Uh, and second, uh, second is that despite all the energy to individualize them and to separate them, uh, the kids, you know, the, the kids create really a sense of solidarity, of community. They are really together. When, when I was there, I was really was surprised in this. Like, they are not uh, working against each other. They are really um, working together, sometimes fighting together towards this oppressive system. Yeah. And this is something I, I really wanted to to show, like in the mm. film. Mm. And I, I also had the feeling that, um, you know, like a queer love story in uh, in a prison setting is something you have seen in other films. But I felt that in Lost Boys, it is not uh, turned into a problem that much. You know, it's 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 not that you have to problematize it, that, that it, it becomes this great kind of rift between the characters. Um, it, was a, it was a will. Like, mm -hmm. we wanted to propose a, a love story of this kind that could, um, you know, resonate with the, this new generation who doesn't make the same... F who, 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 who didn't grow up the same as I did, for example. Yeah. Um, I wanted to create a film about liberty um, and the, the story like the link that they create is a love link that 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 creates freedom for them mm -hmm. uh, and I I wanted also to that the group could also uh, get this energy and to to be as a group like a new family like they create this family together And I wanted that to to go the, the energy to go to the group as well. And in order to 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 accomplish that, I really wanted that the group is modern enough to not care yeah. uh, and to and for and you know when I was on the set, like the actors were very together, and there was no question about that. And it, I really felt old, <laughs> <laughs> and I I. There, there was no question for them. It was very interesting, like yeah. how there was no question for them. So yeah, this was to, this was yeah. that. Um, yeah, it feels like better times actually. Um, and I mean, and also what, yeah, you, yeah. You, you talked about that, and also what we wanted to do from the very beginning is to propose new representations of masculinity. Mm -hmm. Uh, we wanted to to show boys that were tender with each other. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to show boys that could cry, uh, that could be generous, that could be you know have fear or 
you know, miss their parents or be very fragile. Yeah. So in, in this in this path, it was just normal that that you know this this link, this special love that they have together uh, would would be something else in this uh, new masculinity pool mm -hmm. of characters. Yeah. You know? I also felt that um, you really kind of succeeded in in making that um, articulate in the film, and uh, specifically through your two two main actors, uh, uh, Julien de Saint Jean and uh, Khalil Ben Garbia, um, and he, you know, maybe you could tell us a little bit about how you approached the two of them, like what what kind of suggestions you made in working with them? Um, they, w they are very different actors. Uh, Khalil is very instinctive and Julien is very technical. Um, but, you know, we, they, were really, they really wanted to make the film. That's what I felt and that's what they, they told me during the casting. And this really helped, I think, me to ask them a lot of things. Um, I cast them also because they embodied already this tenderness. Mm -hmm. You know, they are very sweet and, <laughs> and very nice uh, already. So it was not very difficult for them to play that. Uh, we, I took them in, uh, in the same center that I was scouting for them to meet also the, the other kids, some other kids that really lift that. Mm -hmm. So that's really gave them a sense of, I think, responsibility to yeah. tell this story. And uh, afterwards, uh, on the set, they were very nice and stuff, but we, I, uh, we hired an a intimacy coordinator. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this is something new and new, and I think yeah. that, that was super helpful for me. Why? Because actually, uh, she uh, allowed me to get much more than I was expecting or than, than, than I would ask, you yeah, know. Yeah. I'm more the type of person who was like, oh, could I ask them this mm. or not that yeah, or yeah. what are they going to say? And uh, she was like, just tell me the story of what you want to show in this scene and I will choreograph the scene, you know. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, okay, okay. And, you know, <laughs> it, it, I, I cannot press enough like the necessity of this job in the industry not only for young people or like two men or blah 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 like because they they it's their job and it's really a choreography job that that helps you um you know make the actors comfortable which is something very important that mm -hmm. was neglected for such a long time yeah but so first of all but second of all who is better than you to um to actually channel like create the story you want to tell yeah like because like they are like we we hired her for three th scenes and of obviously the, the 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 way their body you know act with with each other evolves uh within those three scenes and i would tell her you know the story of of this evolution and then we would call each other we would see a bit each other and stuff and she would call them yeah in the evening and ask them what what they think and what they have come as ideas and stuff and then on set like they would propose something that they rehearsed without me yeah yeah um, that was much better than anything i could have come up with yeah yeah I also, was, that's that's a, an important point that I, i wanted to tell about yeah i also think that's that's fairly exciting because it's such a new concept basically to have an intimacy coordinator on set But what they do is obviously to to enable you to come to different creative choices and uh, to kind of show you what is possible in a way, right? Like in the same way, you know, you would be a director, but you wouldn't normally kind of be the cameraman in the same sense that a cameraman is a professional who knows how to handle a camera. Uh, a camera, an intimacy coordinator would be a specialist. Who, who knows how to how to approach those scenes and I, I think it's fairly great that that you used one because it's such you know there's all this controversy going on about what do they actually do and I think it's it's just a concept that has been a long time coming and and that 
that needs to be used. I think um, I think I really want to, you know, for me, there was no conver- controversy at all. And the first thing was just to create safety on the sets mm-hmm. um, and create ease for them. Um, and I realize now that it added so much, you know, like, yeah, I'm yeah. really going to fight for, for <laughs> this. Um, one of the scenes that I liked a lot was um, the scene um, where uh, Joe recites this poem, or or he's he's reciting that 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 rap, basically, and uh, it's such a beautiful and, and very intense kind of scene. It's almost like he's kind of exploding. Um, did you? How did how did you approach that scene? Kind of like acting that out. Okay, so it's a text that I found, and it's actually, you know, written by an amateur. So it's a very uh, a heartfelt, uh, one-shot uh, thing. Uh, we ke- we edited it a bit, and I I have a very good friend who sh- she's a rapper, and I asked her to work that scene with him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now you're gonna think I'm, I had I had a coordinator for everything. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah she's uh she's a genius and and they they got along very well and uh you know she they they work i i i introduced them to each other and i i, I saw her a little bit before i told her what i wanted and and then they 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 worked and then on the set she was there and uh she, he also Kalili, he's a singer in real life so he's used oh, to the yeah. stage and the lyrics and the words so i think he he Yeah, he he entered it also from this door. Mm. Um, yeah, and I don't know, like the the text itself was you know powerful enough, and I think he yeah. he connected it with it very in much. A good way. Yeah, yeah, because I also felt like there must have been some professional involved because it has this really rhythmic quality. Almost like a finished song, you know, and that that kind of really that really shows. Yeah, we they worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah they worked. Yeah. They definitely worked. <laughs> we worked. Yeah, um, one of the uh, major themes, at least to me, of the film was um, the idea of of freedom in different ways, basically because you have this recollection of frozen fish at the beginning of the film. But then you also have that other concept a little bit later of um, a snake sort of encircling the world. Um, was that to you, what was the idea behind incorporating these two ideas or concepts? I think uh, the idea, I, it was the idea of home, the sense of home that he's longing for. And home can mean a lot of things. Like for him in the beginning of the movie, uh, he's proposed a home in an empty space with nobody outside who's waiting for him. And this is the freedom they propose to him. Mm-hmm. So in the beginning of the movie, he, he's not happy. He's in this ice. Yeah. And um, we, you know, the, the arrival of, of William creates, you know, a new paradigm for him. To what 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 is it to desire? Um, is it going to desire with the desire with the with the charm with the body desire? There is also this desire for another perspective and another home, yeah. uh, a sense of home. And for him, this this sense of home can be just in the arms of someone else. Yeah, yeah. This is what it, what he learns uh, along the way. And for me, like the snake. Was this this um, metaphor of of a place that 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 you feel safe in? Um, that you you the snakes is the protection mm-hmm. uh, from institutions, norms, and society that and they just you know create this invisible space inside um, this territory, this paradise. Actually, yeah, this, yeah. this freedom, this paradise. Um, So that's how they yeah exactly that's that's kind of what I thought that there's a shift between those two definitions kind of 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 being kind of enclosed in ice and not being able to move and just kind of slowly dying to a, a sense of home where you just feel at ease and feel that that kind of warmth yeah, and there's this kind of ro- of uh, repetition thing like the round and 
we try to create something like in the end with the with the you know they 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 run in circle mm -hmm. and you know mm -hmm. there's like this this snake chasing and you know yeah that's yeah well now um i think having seen the movie and uh, i think a lot of people are going to feel that way I, I, is there anything else for you on the horizon are you working on other projects right now yeah like i'm i uh, i'm working more on uh, small smaller stuff uh like i i'm a video artist for dance contemporary dance and theater so i'm working on those on those I'm uh, I'm writing I'm always writing you know something <laughs> new and yeah I will write something new but um yeah like not right now right now but yeah, sure. uh yeah. I have another feature coming and yeah that's it all right well you know I think that's that's it for me um I want to thank you again for for taking the time and thank you again for for giving us le paradis It's such a beautiful movie, and I really enjoyed it a lot. And cool. um, I hope you have a great time. Yeah, thank you so much.